What is happening, everybody? It is a new episode of Let There Be Talk, number 688. It is a solo edition today, a solo episode. I'm flying solo and uh, all kinds of stuff to get into today. Uh, glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. And uh, thanks for uh, joining me every week. You guys have a good weekend or what's happening? It's been fucking raining here again in L.A. That's every week. It's just insane. It's just a full-blown Seattle junior now. Just rains, uh, you know, three days in a row. Then it's sunny for about a minute. And then it rains again. Same shit I talked about last week. Just nonstop rain. Rained on those fuckers out there running the marathon. The L.A. marathon was yesterday. Just fucking up the streets. Just fucking up the streets. Just, you know, you want to have the L.A. marathon? Just have them run through, like, areas where nobody goes. Like, send them out there in Van Nuys through the industrial area. You know, give them some obstacles. Or have them run uh, through, uh, what's that called down there? The fucking... uh, you know, the, the downtown just tent city down there. Have them run through there, see if they can make it through. Just like a game of Frogger. Just dudes out there. Get them! Man, zombie, zombie apocalypse. Zombie apocalypse. Fuck. Anyway, it was funny. Somebody had retweeted um, something I tweeted. And I was like, did I say that? And I looked, and they I don't know how people do this, but do they go through your entire feed from years and years? Who's got that kind of time just scrolling through? And uh, let me look at it real quick. He, uh, he retweets it, and I'm like, I don't think I tweeted that. And then I was like, oh, I did, but it was in 2015. That's how long I've been wasting my life away on social media. 2015 on Twitter, I wrote, run your fucking marathon on a treadmill like everybody else does, assholes. Fuck the LA marathon. That's the hashtag. So they must have uh, searched uh, fuck the LA marathon hashtag. And uh, I just searched it. And there hasn't been a tweet with that since mine and before that that hashtag was 2013 it was used so i don't know who's just searching it somewhat stuck in traffic because that's what happens see la just completely shuts down and they don't give a fuck about anything they go we're gonna just uh shut down this uh area from downtown all the way out to uh the beach and you know so just go fuck yourself if you got to get around and uh, and that's basically what they do. And so you can't drive anywhere. All the side streets are all jammed up, just like the Academy Awards. It's just the fucking, you know, nonstop shit show all year of just the city goes, we're doing this. And everybody goes, ah, OK, you know, like the uh, Thanksgiving parade parades in 2023, a fucking parade then the LA Marathon, then the Academy Awards. I'm down for uh, all of these, by the way. I'm not fucking knocking on them. I'm just saying, just let them run around the cars and shit. We just drive and, you know, oh shit, there's some fucking people here running. I don't know. Uh, Anyway, it rained on the marathoners yesterday. I don't even know why I opened up with that because it did not affect me at all today. I stayed in for most of the day. And then uh, went out to some uh, open houses. I love going to open houses, man. I've said it before. You go and you just look at people's fucking bad taste or good taste inside their houses. There's not really any, um, you know, shit shows these days in the open houses because these people hire these uh, stagers. So you walk in and you go like, fuck, this guy's house is dope. But really, if you looked at some photos uh, when he was living in there, it's just a hoarder fest. 
and then they get all the hoarding shit out of there and they bring in like cool furniture and clean it up and you think like man this guy really has it going on so i uh, went to some open houses and then uh you know just sat around man sat around it was the first weekend i wasn't on the road for like four weeks and uh like i said last week just just floating around life still lost doing comedy podcasting trying to figure out how to uh how to get to another level and uh you know you just sit around some days you're like should i even get out of bed <laughs> i don't know how these people it's so funny. I've been uh, really listening to this, a lot of Rick Rubin lately. Um, he's on a podcast. Let me tell you what it is. It's like three hours. And I don't really listen to podcasts, but I listen to anything Rick Rubin's on because I try to listen to people that I really, uh, really respect and, um, and people that have made it in life, not necessarily just uh, monetary wise or fame, but just to be able to reach some kind of level of Zen. Uh, I don't know how they do it. Uh, the podcast is called Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Rick Rubin was on February 13th and it's three hours. I was telling Jeselnik about this because we were both talking about his uh, book that he has out right now. And it's a lot of Zen stuff. And uh, I'm constantly trying to figure out my brain is cooked. It's definitely uh, scattered. And uh, the longer I live, the the weirder it gets. And it does help with comedy writing, but it gets in the way of a lot of shit too. And I sit there and think about like, how do these guys like Rick Rubin and, uh, you know, Jim Carrey, you know, former comedian, one of the funniest fucking guys at the store ever, Jim Carrey, just huge fame. Uh, from the store to living color to one of my favorite movies, uh, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. What a great fucking movie that was, but I'm always listening to them and they're always so Zen and they're like, yeah, you know, you just gotta, you gotta get up. You gotta do a little yoga. You gotta do some meditation. And I'm always like, fuck, I'm doing all of this, man. How are you getting there? And then I realized what it is. They keep forgetting the one fact that they're rich as fuck. <laughs> and people go, oh, money ain't going to fix you. Hey, fuck you. Yes, it is. I don't care what anybody says. A good grip of fucking cash and, uh, you know, in the bank. And you, you know, I know, I know it's going to fucking fix me because I won't have to live with thin walls here and neighbors anymore. I uh, I don't have to stress out each month like, oh, my God, I lost three people on the Patreon. Fuck. That's what they fucking forget to say. The big, big key to that is Rick should be like, yeah, you should uh, you should wake up in the morning and meditate and uh, drink some green tea. Deep, deep breaths, deep breaths, three of them. Um, uh, then do some yoga and then open up your Wells Fargo app and just look at your massive amount of cash. <laughs> Which, by the way, man, I don't, you know, I'm pretty fucking street smart. I know a lot of stuff that's going on and shit, but the world is a goddamn shit show. These banks are collapsing. The everybody's about to drop bombs on each other, nuclear bombs and, you know, China, Russia, Ukraine, uh, the United States. Everybody's ready to bomb each other. It's almost like they're bored and they're like, we've had these fucking bombs forever. Let's use them. I'm telling you, man. I fucking open up the internet each day and it's like, wow, the banks, it's crazy. And you know what? I don't even dig in to find out what it's about because I just don't want that in my fucking brain. You know what? 
if I'm going to die, I don't want to know how. I just want to be cruising down the street and here it comes. That's what I was saying. I want to live 10 more years so I can see how this fucking planet ends. So I'm working out. I'm staying clean, no sugar. They're like, how do you do it? I want to see the end, man. I want to see the end. <laughs> and, you know, I don't leave a movie early. I watch that movie to the end. And this has been a long fucking movie. I've been uh, watching this movie for 57 years. I'll watch it 10 more years, 67-ish on the patio somewhere, wherever I'm at, and just kaboom. Right, Gertie? Kaboom! <laughs> I know, that's grim as fuck, right? <laughs> the Grim Dean is here! Anyway, um, so yeah, pretty good week in a comedy. I was at the store on Saturday night, uh, hanging with uh, Bobby Lee! Congrats to Bobby Lee. He uh, sold Tiger Belly, his podcast. Fucking very cool. I always uh, root for comics. I'm not one of those dudes that is like, ah, oh, man, fucking, fucking, man, fuck. So congrats to him. You know, the more success to the comedians at the store, uh, the, the more successful the store is. It's just constantly crazy rocking. The comedy store has just been out of control all three rooms constantly sold out. I, I was in the, uh, what, original room last night? Totally sold out. Working working a lot of new stuff. And, um, you know, I, I, I've said it over and over, but I got to just shoot this this comedy because uh, it's, uh, I'm done with doing this, uh, this COVID stuff. I, I don't talk about COVID. I'm just saying the stuff I wrote during COVID. I do have one COVID bit. But that's, you know, that shit now, it's weird to think. It's been three years. And uh, so, you know, I, I want to get rid of that. I got some new stuff. And I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what to do. I'm going to try to film it and, uh, and put it out there somewhere just on YouTube and uh, snap it, chop it up for the, uh, the TikTokers. And the YouTube shorts and the Instagram reels. You got to know all the fucking ins and outs. I will tell you this. I'm going to put up some clips this uh, all this week from my uh, comedy fort shows out there in Fort Collins. Just got the shows, four of them filmed. Going to chop up some and uh, give you guys some clips. Please share them. You see the clips? Put them in your... Uh, your Instagram stories or uh, send them around, email them around, put them up on Twitter. See what happens if you like them. If you don't, just go, man, you suck, dude. Wild weekend. Wild weekend. I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, Rick Allen from Def Leppard was attacked in front of a Four Seasons in Florida after doing the uh, the uh, show out there. Def Leppard, Motley Crue played... Uh, uh, shows in Florida, and then he was just uh, chilling out front, smoking a cigarette, and some fucking 19-year-old Ohio lunatic kid hiding behind some pole just charged and, uh, you know, tackled him or pushed him down, and fucking Rick, you know, knocked his head on the ground, and then a woman came out to help him, and the guy beats up the woman, this is the biggest piece of shit. He basically uh, beats up a handicapped person and a woman. What kind of fucking pussy are you? You fight a handicapped man, a guy with one arm, who's been through the ringer in his life, and then you fight a woman. Oh, man, you are a piece of shit. There's nothing more pussy than fighting a woman and a handicapped man. Anyway, man, now, you know, that's the kind of fucking shit that's out there. No, no reason at all. Like, what is, I mean, what's the guy? He's just hanging around. I haven't, you know, heard any interviews from him or whatever, but it goes back to that fucking lunatic that attacked Chappelle on stage at the Hollywood Bowl. These people are out there. 
you know? And, and it was like, did he not like Def Leppard? Did he, uh, you know, did he even know it was Rick Allen or he's just random? I, I, I think he was just loaded. He was probably doing bath salts. Are people still doing bath salts? You don't hear about that anymore. What happened to bath salts? It was all the rage. Bath salts was everywhere in Florida. People just doing bath salts. I don't even know what the fuck bath salts are. I haven't been in the drug game in years. And uh, all of a sudden it was bath salts. It's like uh, with the healthy shit, you know? One year it's uh, pomegranate juice. The next year it's kale. The next year it's fucking, uh, you know, mushroom juice. The next year it's uh, crushed up toenails, whatever. It's fucking crazy. These people are out there attacking fucking people. Someone attacked someone at the end of the um, LA marathon at the, the the finish line. And that just popped up in my, uh, you know, bad news machine. That's what I call the phone. It's the bad news machine. Bloop. Every time I open it up, oh, what the fuck? Just the bad news machine. Oh, man. I tell you the only thing, if I didn't do comedy, I wouldn't own... I wouldn't have any social media. I wouldn't have anything. I would have a flip phone in case I got uh, sick or hurt or Gertie or something with Gertie. And a flip phone would be useless because no one answers their fucking phone anymore. You know? I don't know why they put the phone option. I've said it before in the iPhone. It should be the I know phone. Just charge three, four grand for it. Yeah, this one's got no phone. It's cool. Does nothing. Except give you bad news, motherfucker. Anyway, Rick Allen out there attacked by a guy on bath salts. <laughs> I don't know if he's on bath salts, but I just remember people were fucking something on bath salts. People were eating people's faces and shit when they would smoke bath salts. Which, by the way, I was on Facebook Marketplace and, uh, you know, there's people selling uh, psilocybin mushrooms on Facebook marketplace. Just I'm, I'm scrolling through looking for a piece of furniture and there it is just a big bags of mushrooms. People selling them on the Facebook marketplace. I'll tell you what, man, uh, that's fucking crazy. I wanted to reach out to him just to say, Hey man, how do we do this? Like, I mean, aren't they afraid of police? Like, hey, you want to meet down at the uh, Starbucks on Ventura Boulevard, dude? Bring that big sack of mushrooms and I'll fucking throw you in prison. It is weird. I don't know how they do this. Do you like PayPal them or something? They send it to you and you never see them. Is it a scam? I don't know. But all I know is if you can get mushrooms on Facebook Marketplace, holy shit. That is too easy, and I'm pissed off. Because back when I was growing up, you had to know basically a semi-serial killer to get mushrooms. Mushroom dealers were a total different type of human. You understand what I'm saying? The Look, you had the weed dealers. We get it. Weed dealers are just stoners. They wanted to smoke weed free. You go over to Billy's house. He sell you a quarter ounce, dude. You watch some cartoons and eat some fucking burritos. You know, Coke dealers, totally. That was the weird thing uh, when I was growing up because everybody thought they were going to be the Tony Montana. They had the gold chain starter kit, the real skinny gold chain. And... uh they would always have, you know, a muscle car, like a Camaro or something with the best car stereo, but they never had a lot of money. You know, they weren't the fucking, they were selling grams at a party, a keg party. And then the mushroom dealer, you would be like, dude, you know where to get mushrooms? And no one would know. And then somebody would go, I know a dude, but he's kind of weird. And, uh, oh, man, my guy's name was Joe. What was his last name? Fuck. And, and, and straight up weird as fuck. 
So, you know, you go over to the house and it's basically like you're over at uh, the character Brando played uh, Kurtz on Apocalypse Now. You know, the guy opens the door. Are you alone? I love when they always say that. Are you alone? And there's, there's no one next to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm alone. Anybody follow you here? It's like, no, no one fucking followed me here. All right, come on in. Then you go in their house and, you know, they're fucking surrounded by buckets of shit. These mushrooms are grown in shit. That's how they're made. And, you know, and the guy looks like he hasn't showered in years and he's wearing like really bad, rugged, ragged boxers. And he's got like a cat, you know, you sit on the couch and you're instantly just filthy. And, you know, you got to hear his stories for a while before he'll bust out the mushrooms. You're like, look, dude, I just want to fucking get out of here. But they're lonely. You're not sure if they're high. You're not sure if they're going to stab you in the neck. And then they just come out and they start giving you a story. You don't want to, you don't want to mess with these, man. You don't want to, you don't want to fuck up. You don't, you don't want to take the wrong amount, man. You understand? These are potent. You see the blue? They snap a moment. You see the blue inside there? That's, that's the perfect psilocybin mixture. Don't go pussy either. Don't wrap them up in peanut butter. Put them in your mouth and chew them up and enjoy the ride. Think about it. A mushroom dealer was a way different dude. It wasn't even like a, an acid dealer was more of like a dead dude, a deadhead, you know, like, hey, dude, I need a miracle. Here's some blue dot Mickey Mouse, man. Double dot, micro dot, fucking cosmic squirrel, you know, whatever. That, that, the mushroom dealer was always just some weird fucker. No friends zero friends you never see the guy out he's not like dude you go to that party later they're just like here here's the mushrooms get out and you're not even sure if the guy's going to be alive the next time and i don't know how they stayed in business because mushrooms right now are red hot everybody wants them try to beat their fucking uh depression i've been microdosing everybody's into the mushrooms but back then you didn't you mushroomed like once a year it was like I think it's time. And, you know, you and your buddies would be like, yeah, it's time. And you just got a couple cases of beer and you drove up to the like Sonoma mountains and you took these fuckers and, and it'd be two or three or four of you. And one of the guys would always have a bad trip. It's always one guy, dude, help me now he's fucking up your trip you're like ah, you're fucked dude you're fucked i remember i uh took the mushrooms and then my buddies took them and i was driving i think i told this story before but uh we got pulled over my asshole friend didn't tell me his tags were expired and i was just fucking torched on mushrooms but i was i was handling it it's weird to drive on mushrooms totally fucking high that's the kind of shit i used to do back in the day people would do that back in the day you just you were just tripping balls driving a fucking 72 nova <laughs> got pulled over anyway the two guys in the back are just laughing and the cops like what are, what are they laughing about i got oh, they're just assholes and he's like, if they don't stop laughing, I'm taking all three in jail. And I'm like, for what? Laughing? He's like, yeah. And then I was out there. He had me doing the fucking test. And I was just killing it on the shrooms. Just one, two, su super focused. Three, four, A, B, C, C, D, B, A, whatever. Fucking walking the line. But they're laughing. He took us in. He took us into jail. He goes, I don't know what's going on with you guys but uh, I'm taking you in. And he threw us in the drunk tank right when the shrooms were just peaking and we were in there all night, drunk tank on fucking mushrooms. Oh God, it was dark. Oh my God.
Let us out at like 5.30 in the morning. All right, see you guys later. Just walking around fried, trying to get home. Anyway, mushrooms are hot now. So if you can get them on Facebook Marketplace, that is fucking crazy to me. Really crazy. Um, Gertie, what are you doing? Gertie's over here wanting to back scratches. Gertie. Gertie. Uh, I was mentioning that uh, Bill and I are going to uh, the MotoGP, Burr and I, and uh, we're going to be doing a show out in Texas. I don't know where it's at. It's on BillBurr.com. But uh, we're going to the MotoGP. And so I've been uh, talking about the MotoGP. So, of course, my uh, bad news machine, the phone, it uh, knows what I'm talking about. Just starts showing me videos of MotoGP on my Instagram the old fucking spy phone. And so I start watching these videos. And like I've said a million times, I'm always fucking just in awe of these riders. Just in awe of these riders. Just some of the most incredible shit I've ever seen. These guys just riding on their knee, you know, in these turns. But there happened to be this footage, a bunch of footage coming up. There was, I guess, a MotoGP somewhere where it was pouring rain, pouring fucking rain. And they're still leaning it all the way over, just on their knee all the way over. I don't know how you put that much trust in a goddamn tire, but they got it all the way over. They're doing about 180 miles an hour. This guy is fucking all the way over. And as you're watching the video, there's like bodies flying by him. It is one of the most incredible videos I've seen in years. It's just dudes crashing. And this guy has ice in his blood. He's just like, mm, 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 mm. bodies, motorcycles. I, I, it is some of the most spectacular footage and I was just like, how is this guy even, I, I mean, I would be for, uh, just a body flying by you, like 150, 160 miles an hour. And they're, they're just burning it in the rain, man, on these super bikes. I'm telling you, man, if you've never rode a motorcycle, you just do not understand how insane that is to me that these guys are riding like 180 miles an hour 150 miles an hour in the pouring rain leaned all the way over dudes are crashing and the guys are just in it like asphalt ballet it is just insane i cannot wait to see this moto gp i cannot wait to see it but bill hit me up and he goes hey man it's going to be tough for you not to uh, get that that fucking hunger to ride again after the MotoGP. And I go, oh, I, I got the hunger right now. I want to ride. I just can't wear a helmet. And, uh, you know, I got that neck surgery. I'm sure I could do it, but I would hate to be one of those guys where you ride for a while and then your neck fucking your disc pops out again. And the doctor's like, dude, I told you don't wear a helmet. You're a fucking idiot. And I, and I tell you, that was one of the most gnarly surgeries I've ever had in my life. I'm, not that I've had a million surgeries, I had the appendix out. I was knocked out. I don't fucking feel any of that. I had, uh, what else I had done? Um, did I have it? Oh, yeah, fucking ingrown toenail surgery. You know what I mean? I had tonsils out, all of that shit. You're knocked out. But the next surgery, I was awake. And uh, the fucking needles going in, they're like this long. I, that's no joke. I posted up a video on my Instagram. I'm not, I'm not fucking making it up. They're eight inch needles going into your fucking spine. You know? I had my run on the motorcycles. I had a 32, 35 years, something like that on two wheels. I miss it big time. 
but I don't miss the uh, the craziness of it every day of these assholes out here. But I'm going to ride on the track at the MotoGP. I'm getting uh, Ducati's going to let me ride on the Saturday. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm not going to be leaning down my knee leaning. But um, uh, I am going to go out to the track, though. There's a school out here. And uh, my buddy runs it. And uh, his name's Fabrice. And he runs a, a track school where you can learn to drag your knee and uh you you learn on 250s small bikes which is fine with me because a 250 on a track is fast anyway because you know it's just turns you're not there's a couple straightaways and that's about it but i want to go out there and learn that because i can wear a helmet on that because the helmet it's not really the helmet that'll fuck up my neck it's the wind of constant riding and it blowing the wind blowing the, my neck around in a weird position to where it could pop out the disc. So I am going to try to at 57 years old, try to drag a knee this summer, but uh, I don't know. I, I just don't think I have the, uh, there's something in me that won't let me get all the, I mean, I've rode and I was, you know, I'm a pretty fucking good rider, but, uh, you know, I just don't know how you do that. So we'll see. You got to put trust in that tire. Anyway, looking forward to going out there, but check out this footage. Uh, I'm sure if you YouTubed MotoGP in the rain, because I just threw it up on the Instagram stories. Um, but holy shit really fucking crazy to see that uh i dropped some hats i dropped some hats uh, i dropped a clothing line the tree i've been working on this clothing line for like two years i had an idea of it during um covid and uh i love joshua tree i love the desert i love uh nature and trying to get zen as i talked about earlier but um I had an idea of, uh, you know, I always called Joshua tree, the tree. And I remember one time I put it up, like I'm hanging out at the tree for Christmas. And some guy goes, we don't call it the tree. And that immediately made me want to call it the tree more by some jackass trying to tell me that not to call it the tree. It's like the people, you know, I grew up in the Bay Area, San Francisco, and people go, Frisco, and then the San Francisco people go, we don't call it Frisco. It's like, oh, 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 yeah, who makes that fucking rule, you know? I know some fucking uh, people that call it Frisco, and they're outlaws. Go tell them you don't call it Frisco, you know? So anyway, I came up with this idea, this clothing line, the tree, and I don't know if it's going to be successful or if it's going to fail. But to me, I need to keep trying to do shit. I need to keep the creative mind going. I do it in comedy. I do it with the podcast. Once a year, I do it with the Bon Scott tribute. I constantly want to try new shit. That's how I got into comedy 14 years ago. I wanted to try something else. There's more than one thing in life. So I was like, I want to try a clothing line. I love clothes. I love fashion. I love glasses. I love boots. I love hoodies. I love sneakers. I love denim. I love fucking trucker hats. I like leather, all kinds of shit. I've been promoting people's shit for most of my life. That's good. And I, I like to promote their shit. But why not come up with some of my own stuff? And, uh, you know, stuff that I like a lot. And so I called up the greatest uh, graphic designer I know, Aaron Draplin. Had him on the podcast years ago. Absolutely love this guy. He was on a lot of Instagram lives with me during COVID. He is a goddamn genius with design. He did my Gertie hoodies, which... To me, I didn't even care if one Gertie hoodie sold. I love my dog and I love the design that uh, Draplin did 
just this beautiful French bulldog, Gertie. So I was like, you know what? I want to do a clothing line. And it's really fucking hard because it's just me. I mean, Draplin did the design and shit, but I had to tell him what I wanted. And then I had to uh, get it made. And then I got to try to sell them. I ship them myself because I just don't have the infrastructure of a team. But if I could get like some backers and a team or whatever, I think I could really fucking kill it with some uh, with some cool shit. So I thought, well, I'll just start small and see where it goes. And holy shit, the response was great over the weekend with the hats. The idea of the hat was just, I'll tell you the idea of the hat. I just pictured, you know, like when I tell people, I go, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm headed out to the tree. I just thought that was cool. The tree, you know, it's like, you know, everybody shortens everything. LOL, dude. <laughs> Totes. I hate when people say that for totally. Totes, dude. Totes. Totes going out to the tree. LOL. Saba, boo, ba, ba. I don't know. You know, everybody should. But anyway, I thought it was a, a good idea. And so the first one is just a Joshua tree and it says the tree. And we have some other designs uh, cooking in the, um, in the old uh, think tank. And uh, we're going to have some hoodies and we'll have some sweatshirts and maybe some uh, beanies. But uh, I mean, eventually I'd like to design uh, some eyewear, do a collab with uh, Blake Kuahara or Jacques Marie Maj or something. The, the Delray frame. Um, Standard and Strange and I are working on a couple projects together that are going to be coming out. And uh, it's just something I really, really enjoy. And a lot of that has to do with uh, when I got the diabetes and lost weight. I was like, fuck, I, I could wear some stuff and, and look okay. <laughs> Before I just buy, you know, double X shirt and some big jeans and uh, a pair of boots and just roll because I was just fatty want a donut. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, yeah, so anyway, the tree is out. There's a uh, Instagram you can follow, the tree CA, the tree CA. And uh, you can hit me on Dean Del Rey Instagram if you want to buy one. I'll be shipping them out all this week. I shipped some last week. A lot of people uh, bought them. My man, Greg Riley, Bobby Lee got one. Bobby Lee! And uh, Steve Howie, he's rocking one. I got one from Brad Wilk. And uh, yeah, man, the tree, C-A, is the Instagram. It's the gram. There's another short one. Dude, hit me up on the gram. Dude, hit, hit me on the gram, man. I'll be out at the tree. Totes, dude, totes. Totes, man. <laughs> anyway um i've been i've been following a quite a bit of the john mayer solo tour looking forward to hopefully being able to see that i'm not quite sure if i'm going to get to see that actually uh when he plays la i will be in texas um for the moto gp but i can still try to go fly and see him somewhere i really want to see this because it's solo acoustic and he's doing a lot of songs from the Born and Raised record. And to me, it kind of looks like it would be a Born and Raised type super tour. Uh, meaning there's uh, songs from newer records now, but if he was out on the Born and Raised tour, uh, I don't think you could even get a better set list than what he's been doing on this run. Now, I have not seen a show and I have caught wind that he doesn't want people to stream them. And I fully respect that. Uh, you know, I, I wish that those yonder bags were just standard at all entertainment venues, uh, meaning movies, concerts, comedy shows, uh, not necessarily like a sporting event because who cares? They're, they're showing that on TV as you're streaming it anyway, but 
mad props to uh, John Mayer for not wanting people to stream it because I understand it. It's not like he's like, yeah, I don't want you to stream this because this and that. I'm sure he just wants you to be engaged. He's telling stories and he's playing songs that some of them he hasn't played uh, in a long time. And he's really enjoying it. And he just doesn't want to see the fucking bad news machine. See if I can get some bad news machine. Can't see it. It's like, there it is, the bad news machine uh, in his face. And um, I totally respect that. I think that, uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm I'm addicted to my phone. And uh, it's a sad addiction. But, uh, you know, I got to be on the phone most of the time for fucking work. Um, I don't know. But shout out to my man, John Mayer. Go see this tour. The set list uh, look dynamite. Keep your phone in uh, in your pocket, man. And just watch it. I bet you'll remember that show for years. I've said this many times. I don't really remember very many shows I've seen in the last 20 years because I was probably filming or looking at my phone or, or uh, you know, whatever. And the shows that my phone was locked up, I remember right now. You know, and, uh, you know, as much as people complain, like, dude, you're taking my rights, man. I got kids. Uh, they might need calling me because the uh, baby says, like, nah, we're not going for that. All the way up until around 2004, kids just stayed home with the babysitter. You went out. You had a good time. You forgot you had kids. Sometimes people need to forget they have kids. Just go out and just escape. Look, I know you love your fucking kids. I love my dog, Gertie. But sometimes you need to just go out and be like, oh, that's right. And then go home and you go, there's my kids. Cool. You know, that's just how it is, man. You got to fucking go out and escape. Go hit up fucking Joe. For those mushrooms, sit on his couch and hear a story. <laughs> that was another thing back in the day. You didn't have phones. You know, you can't you can't go to the mushroom man with your phone. They'd be like, dude, are you wearing a wire? Remember that one? You go to a dealer, they're like, dude, you're wearing a wire? <laughs> you're wearing a wire. Holy shit. The fucking the abuse your mind and your conscious had to do to deal drugs. You had to constantly thinking people were wearing a wire. Unreal. Unreal. Some new rock out there. Going to give you a heads up on some new rock. People have been loving uh, my recommendations and, uh, very cool. I'm glad you dig them. I got a lot of emails last week. Uh, this band right here, never heard of them. Somebody sent it over to me. They described it kind of as a Brian Jonestown massacre. I would disagree with that. I would say it's more kind of morphine, which was a fucking great band. There'll be a careful pain. Mark the Sandman. If you have not heard morphine, do yourself a favor. I would say this band's kind of morphine meets Nick Cave and they're called the black Delta movement and they are fantastic. And their record, their full record comes out, I believe in a couple weeks and um, go dig in on that. Another one that I've been uh, digging on is wet leg. And um, did they play SNL? I don't know if they did, but wet leg is out on tour with Jack white. And uh, Wet Leg is fucking very interesting. Great, great sound. And uh, those are my two recommendations this week. I hope you dig them. Oh, by the way, today, or no, it was yesterday, was the 41st anniversary of the death of Randy Rhodes. I cannot believe it's been 41 years. And... Uh, you know, really crazy. If you want to hear some of the most in-depth 
Randy Rhodes stories from that day. I had uh, Rudy Sarzo on the first time. He tells that story real deep. And then Tommy Aldridge, who was on that tour playing drums, he was on a few years ago. His story is really fucking interesting. So if you're a big Randy Rhodes fan and you've read everything on Randy and what you think happened that day or whatever, I guarantee if you listen to the Tommy Aldridge story, wow, I was still, I'm still blown away when he told me that story over at the Sportsman's Lodge. I met him uh, in his room. He was on tour with Whitesnake at the time and had a day off. And I got to sit down with the great Tommy Aldridge. And then, like I said, Rudy Sarzo, the first time he was on, told the uh, story of that day. And, you know, once again, a plane crash took out uh, a superstar. You know, last week I talked about Leonard Skinner plane crash. And uh, which, by the way, after I talked about Gary Rosington being gone, all kinds of... uh, crazy uh dms and emails and videos came over my way of um all these different plane crash skinnered stories on youtube of the people that survived and telling their stories and shit man i just i'm still blown away when people survive plane crashes remember that one um dj am and uh what's his name travis barker they fucking, their plane, their private jet slid off the fucking runway and caught fire and they fucking full blown body burns. I don't know if you've ever seen the DJ AM documentary, but that is a crushing documentary. I love documentaries, man. I watch the fuck out of them. I've said it over and over. How annoying are we after we watch a documentary just walking around like we know shit? I watched one last week. I watched the Elephant Whisperers, and that was the uh, documentary that won Best Documentary Short this year on the Academy Awards. And it really blew my mind because it was, um, it was, it, you know, in this day and age of uh, living in America, with uh, like I said, cell phones and and Wi-Fi and and just food, you, you know food it's so wild to watch people that still live in a jungle with no fucking cell phone uh barely a house you know barely shoes and living like a great life like a a peaceful life a peaceful life And it's this couple and they basically, what they do is when elephants have a baby, if the baby can't keep up and the baby just gets left behind, they get the baby in the jungle and they bring them to their house and they raise these elephants. And it's just a beautiful story, man. It is really a beautiful story. And once in a while, I like to see something like that just to give me hope, (laughs) hope with the world. You know, they're just there raising this baby elephant and uh, they live in the jungle. It's such a trip. Now, I I know that they don't know any other way. They they just enjoy living in the jungle, raising this. No, no job. They just go out. They hunt their food right now. Twenty twenty three. They go out, they hunt food. Hey, I'm hungry. Well, we better go fucking kill something if we're going to eat. And then they come back and they eat and then they raise this elephant. Oh, man. Wow. Check it out, man. It's pretty fucking cool. It is pretty cool. Um, Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Thank you for all the new Patreoners. Uh, I got a brand new one here. I'm not quite sure what his name means, but... um, it is Fortune Farms. Thank you for joining the Patreon. I will be doing a uh, live Zoom tomorrow night. No, maybe tonight. Yeah, maybe tonight. Anyway, I do live Zooms with the Patreoners. 
And I also try to drop bonus episodes. Um, I, it just fucking my uh, my head is just crazed. Next week, we will be uh, diving into the watches. They're going to be releasing the new watches. And you know how Kevin Christie and I are crazy over that. That's going to be March 27th, next Monday. The new Rolexes and uh, I think Omegas and Paddocks and stuff will be coming out. And, uh, oh, drop my phone. I dropped my bad news machine. Um, anyway, Gertie, Gertie just freaked out on that. Um, so uh, Kevin and I will be diving into what they're going to release. And it's always amazing to see these people on Instagram with their Photoshops going, uh-oh, this Rolex just a uh, secret leak, a secret leak. And it's like, come on, man. But I'll tell you what, some of these... Uh, Photoshop renderings of these potential ideas of Rolexes coming out are just incredible. I wish that Rolex had a setup to where you could just go on and like Adidas did it for a while where you could just build your own shoe, what color stripes, what color sole, what color tongue. Vans did it too for a while, just whatever you want to do. That'd be great if Rolex just like, they just had a program where you went on, you're like, I want a sub, but I want a pink sub with a black bezel and, uh, you know, ruby markers or whatever. I would go pink sub. There was a company making pink sub mariners. They customize them. And I thought, that's fucking great. You know, you wear it around, people be like, pink, what are you fucking girl? I love when people say, like, man, I couldn't wear that. I couldn't wear that. I mean, you can pull it off, but I can't. I can't pull that off. And that just lets me know that you have shitty friends that are going to say something to you, like, you know, down at the construction yard. What are you wearing? Girls' pants? In the 80s, you had to buy girls' pants. And who gave a fuck? You had to buy girls' pants because men's pants were big old fucking barrels. It just looked like one size fits all. Anyway, so next week, we're going to be diving into watches. Hit me on the Instagram or Twitter. Let me know what watch you hope that uh, is coming out. And let me know um, what, you, uh, what you think is coming out and what you hope is coming out. Whatever. Anyway, hit me on the, hit me on the gram, dude, or the twit twat. Tick a top, cock, tick top, hit. hit me on the real shorts and the uh, YouTubers. I don't know. I love all you guys. Keep the candles lit. Have a great week. And um, I hope to see you out at some shows and hope to see you on my patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Also, the tree hats and all my uh, new t shirts are on deandelray.com and the tour dates. See you in Las Vegas. April 3rd through the 9th at the Comedy Cellar. See you out in Texas with Bill Burr. And if you're at the Moda GP, say hey. And uh, other than that, I'll be down at the Comedy Store and the uh, other LA clubs uh, around. Uh, Laugh Factory, Flappers, Ice House, Improv. I'm somewhere. Catch me and uh, have a good one. Candles lit.